Well, it's an absolutely beautiful day down here on the wild coast. We're blessed with some amazing sunshine and we are truly, truly, truly fortunate to live where we live. As you can see the beautiful ocean in the background there. A little breezy today, but certainly by no means anything that's going to shy us away from having a nice fire. Kids are outside having a jaw and we're going to do something that's pretty traditional around these parts, around the wild coast and in the Kaza culture. So we've got something we're going to put together for you in that beautiful little pokey pot. Nice fire in the background. So we hope you'll join us today. Kick off your shoes, crack a cold one and uh, let's bra. So great to have you back here with us for recipe 10 of our 21 recipes in 21 days. And today we are going to do a staple around here on the wild coast called Ngoshu. Stamp and beans pretty much, there you can see. So normally you would soak this kind of overnight. I just tried something as a little bit of a kitchen hack. And I, a couple of hours ago, just poured a liter of boiling water to cover it. And that seems to have worked. The beans are sort of splitting a little bit, which means I've saved myself a, a lot of time. And you can cook it from raw, but basically all that does is the soaking. It just means that your actual cooking time is shorter. Now, funnily enough, I never really used to eat much of this as a kid, uh, spending so much time out here. Uh, but as I've gotten older, I've just realized how really, really versatile this is. And it's such a cheap meal, and especially with this kind of lockdown isolation thing where everyone's you know still in a massive panic and have stockpiled all these ingredients so on your next shopping trip get some of this play with it very very versatile and you can it adapt so well to whatever flavors you actually want to add to it and today i'm going to give it a nice old curry hit and i'm going to use some cashmere spices that a friend of mine sent to me that um are seriously hot seriously hot all we're going to do is we're going to chop up some onion, we're going to chop up some garlic. I've got a little bit of carrot as well that we're going to dice up, but that's going into the pot. We're going to fry that down nicely, add some seasoning, then we're going to add the samp. And you can add stock, it does need a liquid, you can use plain water or whatever or a packet soup. And that's exactly what I've got. I bought a couple of boxes, remember I didn't panic buy right, okay? But I bought a couple of boxes of this and I think this rich oxtail is going to work perfectly with that, add some meatiness and flavor into that, especially with those curry flavors, it's going to come out tops. We're also going to bry a little bit of buri on the side, so we're going to have some buri and mush and some roast butternut in the coals. This is going to be a meal that feels like summer. the pot on the go. Uh, I've thrown in some cashmere chili spice in there for a bit of heat. I've put in some nice masala powder in there and garlic, onion, carrot and I've used that kind of oxtail flavored soup which will cook down as a base. So about an hour or so should take in there. Just check it every now and again. Give it a stir. Make sure your heat underneath is right. You want there to be some liquid in. You don't want it to completely kind of go dry. Yeah? <laughs> so, um, yeah, we basically just excuse the uh, in the background that Toy Story you can hear. We're having a bit of a chill day. Uh, my wife was baking some muffins this morning using some old bananas and bits of muesli and cereal that was left over and grated some carrot and apple in it. Came out absolutely amazing. Let me show you one. If you can see that, okay, that top bit, that crunch there. That 
is from bits of granola and cereal and you can see sort of the carrots and everything in there if you guys are keen on that recipe let us know in the comments it would be an absolute pleasure to share with you it came out epic what's that Butternut. 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 What are we going to do with this? We're going to cut this up into big chunks. Yes. We're going to put some olive oil and spices and garlic and stuff into a tinfoil parcel. And then we're going to put it in the coals. Yes. In the fire. Yes. And then that's going to make it sweet and delicious and soft and really, really nice. Yes. Are you going to eat some? No. <laughs> Why not? Why aren't you going to eat it? Don't you like veggies? You don't like veggies? You don't like veggies? No. I thought you liked veggies. You don't like veggies? So what do you like? I um, like carrots. You like carrots? Yes. But carrots is a veggie. Okay, and so now for the eternal tinfoil debate of the century, shiny side in versus shiny side out. And I've got to be honest, I don't see how that would make a world of difference at all. So I appreciate what they're selling. I'm just not kind of buying at the moment because they reckon shiny side in irradiates the energy back towards the food. <laughs> <laughs> So fair. 